In recent years, servicing mobile climate control systems in your shop have grown more complicated. This, of course, is due to the new refrigerant 1234YF, which began appearing on some vehicles as early as 2014. By now, you've probably seen a few of these, and understanding the differences is essential in delivering proper service to your clients. Hello, this is Scott Brown with a Motor Age Service Done Right video covering the differences between servicing vehicles with R134A and R1234YF, and is made possible by Robin Air. Robin Air, the most trusted brand in air conditioning. Robin Air provides air conditioning service tools, equipment, testing instruments, and more for the professional service industry. Learn more at robinair.com. In this video, we'll be walking through the nuances of servicing R134A and 1234YF systems. These refrigerants play a crucial role in keeping our vehicles cool and comfortable. Let's explore their differences and learn how to service them properly. Before we dive into the specifics, let's understand the primary differences between refrigerant 134A and 1234YF. These are refrigerants commonly used in automotive mobile air conditioning systems. R134A has been an industry standard since the early 1990s, but due to its high global warming potential, regulations have driven the industry for the adoption of a new refrigerant 1234YF which has a significantly lower environmental impact if it leaks into the atmosphere because of its instability. But the good news is that both of these have similar pressure and temperature curves. So as far as diagnostics, your processes haven't changed. However, the not so good news is that this refrigerant is classified as mildly flammable, which requires special service procedures and equipment that we'll cover in a moment. When it comes to servicing these systems, there are a few key differences to keep in mind. First, the refrigerant identification. The underhood label and or service information should be cross-referenced to make sure that you properly identify which system you're dealing with. Since 1234YF is much more expensive, your front office personnel should have already had this covered. Next, let's talk about the equipment and procedures. Regardless of the refrigerant, you are required to use a Refrigerant Recovery Recycling, or RRR, machine meeting the proper standards. And a great resource for this is the SAE website, macdb.sae.org. This is a live resource page that you can use to verify the equipment you're considering purchasing meets the appropriate standards. At the prominent level, these standards are in place for distinct reasons such as the ability of the machine to recover at least 95% of the system refrigerant within 30 minutes, the disallowance for automated oil injection, and that the machine is equipped with special relays and switches because of the flammability properties refrigerant 1234YF possesses. The current EPA ruling under Section 609, any person professionally repairing or servicing R1234YF MVAC AC systems must use properly certified refrigerant recovery and recycling equipment meeting these standards. One of the big differences in performing a full R1234YF cycle is that it will take approximately 20 to 30 minutes longer than your typical R134A system service. The technician must follow the procedures which are driven by the RRR machine. First, a mandatory refrigerant identification process will take place where this is an option for R134A. But in my opinion, one should identify system refrigerant prior to any service. After evacuation, a pressure decay test will take place and will not allow for charging if it fails. Additionally, during the recharge process, the machine will recharge the system to 15% of its full charge and require the technician to perform an electronic leak detection test of the evaporator with an SAE certified detector meeting both J2791 and J2913 standards. Most detectors on the market far exceed the minimum standard and the Robinair LD7 we use in our shop can detect a leak rate of 0.35 grams per year for R1234YF. If you have an older leak detector from before 1234YF was released, it may not pick up on the new refrigerant, leading to costly leaks and comebacks. The technician will be required to declare that the test has been performed and passed before moving on to finalizing the recharge process. Refrigerant oil. 
the RRR machine must be capable of separating the oil removed during recovery and allowing the technician to accurately record what was removed from the system. After the system has been recharged, the amount of removed oil will need to be replenished using the appropriate oil injector. In some cases, you will need to have different injectors since some vehicles have different oil specifications and mixing these oils, especially on electrified platforms, will produce negative results. Robin Air YF machines have a hose flush feature to ensure that the hoses are clean when moving from vehicle to vehicle to prevent oil cross-contamination. So in conclusion, although the refrigerant temperatures and pressure characteristics are similar, the procedures are different and will take more time to complete. Additionally, technicians performing services on mobile AC systems professionally must be EPA Section 609 certified. And under this certification means that you, the professional, are carrying out the proper processes and procedures, and if not, could be subject to fines of up to $42,000 U.S. In California, AC work orders and invoices must comply with standards outlined by the California Bureau of Automotive Repair Handbook titled, Write It Right. Look for a link to this document in the video description. In my opinion, following their guidelines will help ensure that you're delivering exceptional service for your clients. Well, I hope you found this interesting, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thanks for watching.